going on YouTube family? It's your man Pristine back with another video. Welcome to my first initial thoughts and impressions for the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. Let's dive right into this thing. Now, the, the full retail price for this phone, and you can get this device, uh, you know, from a lot of different carriers. You can get it from the Samsung website. You can get it uh, through Amazon. Uh, you can get it off of eBay. You know, which, you know, if you're looking to get the color variation, then you may want to do like eBay or something like that. But if you get it from carrier stores, which this phone is in pretty much every carrier, it's only the black one that is available. And so I know that, um, you know, as far as the uh, the color schemes that you've got, we've got awesome black, which is what this is. We've got uh, white, blue and peach. And so, you know, if you want to have access to some of those other colors, then you're going to have to go with like, you know, an eBay and like order like an international version of the device. Uh, but, you know, the, 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 the North American version, you know, you're only going to be able to get this device in black. OK, four forty nine ninety nine is the starting price. Again, you know, there's all kind of trade in deals and promotions and things where you can get it much cheaper. You know, if you've got a trade in or like if you port a line over from one carrier to the next, you know, you can get some discounted pricing on it. Um, and so there's a lot of good things that are out there in order to get this phone. But I think that, you know, four forty nine ninety nine is, you know, it, it's 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 a value, you know, uh, because this phone is offering a, an awful lot. OK, so. As far as the display, we've got a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED 1080p by 2400 pixel display. That's featuring 120 hertz um, refresh rate. We've got a 20 by nine aspect ratio, a PPI pixel density of 405, and we've got 85.4 screen to body ratio. We have Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, and we've got a plastic back. Now, the internal specifications now now this is interesting because samsung they decided to switch it up a little bit right i know that last year with the a52 you know we had the snapdragon if i remember correctly the snapdragon 750g uh 5g chips in it well this year samsung decided to go with uh the exynos 1280 so you know as far as the the the, the processor you know it's the exynos 1280 this is a five nanometer 5g chipset We've got an octa-core CPU, we've got a Mali G68 GPU, and we've got 128 gigabytes of storage, but out of the box, you only have available 100.1 gigabytes of storage available because of the user interface and all the pre-installed applications and stuff like that. So I, I think that that is, you know, um, I, I I wish that these 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 OEMs and I've said this in tons of videos before. I wish that they would stop advertising, like oh you know 128 gigs, fresh out of the box you're not getting 128 gigs because they don't tell you that you know the the UI and the pre-installed applications on the uh, uh, on the device is going to absorb some of that some of that uh, that uh, that that storage space. And so um, I thought that it was nice that on uh on the website where it talked about a lot of the specs and things it it was small fine print but you know it did say that you know right when you take this phone out of the box you only have 100.1 gigs available because of all the pre-installed stuff right so i i, I appreciate that um you now we've got six gigs of ram there is a four gig of ram variant i believe that there is an eight gig of ram variant as well but i think those are for like the higher gigabyte uh, uh storage capacities um so this is the six gig variant uh we do have android 12 running one ui 4.1 now one ui is my favorite user interface why because it just offers so much. I mean, the, the, the features and the customization abilities are so robust. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. And, you know, it's funny because I was in my local Best Buy a couple of days ago and, you know, I had the display model of this device and the S22, the, the regular, the small one, which I like, I like that small form factor at 6.1 uh, inches. And, Truthfully, I was going in for this, but then I saw that S22 and but the but the S22 is starting off at 799, right? And so I was like, you know, I, I had them side by side. And I was going through like a lot of the features and the options. And to my surprise, right, a lot of what the A53 is offering here 
are the same things that are being offered in the S22. Now, I do have to be honest, the S22, it's got better cameras, and it should because it's the flagship, right? It's the flagship. This is Samsung's mid-tier uh, uh, device and a very good one. Okay, so the cameras on this device, I'm not saying that they're trash by any stretch of the imagination, but you would expect for the flagship to have a better array of cameras than the mid-range variant. And so, but but it was closer than what the experts may think. Like I was taking photos, you know, just kind of comparing them. And I know that the S22's photos, I mean, they just seem to be a little bit brighter. They seem to be a little bit more crisp. But trust me, ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you the cameras on the A53 are gonna be more than suitable for your average consumer. And a lot of the features that you find under the settings on the S22, the S22 Plus and the S22 Ultra, you are also going to find here on the A53 5G, okay? Um, so, you know, a little later on in the video, we'll talk about, you know, where Samsung, you know, cut, you know, cut some corners just to kind of bring that cost down, but still offering, you know, you're still getting bang for the buck here, okay? So, speaking of cameras, on the, uh, on the, on the rear of the device, we have, We have a, a quad cam setup here, okay? So we've got a 64 megapixel wide lens, okay? We've got a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens. We've got a five megapixel macro lens and a five megapixel depth sensor. Now the features are PDAF, auto electro, uh, um, I'm sorry, optical image stabilization, LED flash, panorama, HDR, and we do have 4K recording at 30 FPS, 1080p recording at 30 or 60 FPS featuring gyro electronic image stabilization. Now the selfie camera, okay. And you guys can see there that when the phone goes to sleep, we do have the always on display. And so, you know, if some of you were wondering, okay, well, this is a mid tier device. It's not going to have always on display. It's not going to have this feature or that feature. Well, no, the phone does have always on display and you can set that up to where it can be on all the time, which is going to drain battery a little bit more, but you could also, you can, you can, you can customize the always on display screen brightness and all that type of stuff to kind of, to kind of help, you know, optimize the battery a little bit so that it's not taking so much power to where it's draining your battery. And I don't really think, you know, battery drainage is going to be too much of a concern on this device because you do have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So, you know, and, and Samsung is, is, is advertising that this thing can get you through, you know, two days easy, if not more, depending on how you use your device. All right. But yes, we do have always on display. I have mine set up to uh, uh, come on at 7 p.m. and to go off at 7 a.m. Okay, so again, for those of you that were looking or wondering if this phone had that feature, yes, it has always on display. You can choose to have it on all the time. You could choose to have it on as a schedule, which is what I do. You could choose to have it to where it only pops on when you tap the display. Like I think you've got like four different options on how you want always on display to be shown. Okay, and that's the same as it is on the S22s, which is the flagship. All right, so now 32 megapixel selfie snapper. Um, <clears throat> this is a wide lens featuring HDR. You do have 4K recording, 30 FPS, and you have 1080p recording also at 30 FPS with the uh, with the 32 megapixel selfie cam. Okay. Um, now, as you just saw, we do have the uh, under the display. Uh, this is an optical under the display sensor. It's not the ultrasonic one, you know, so it's not as fast as, you know, the one that's on the S22, the Plus and the S22 Ultra, but it still gets the job done. I'm not trying to take any jabs at Pixel, but you would think by now at this frame of the game, Pixel would have the fingerprint sensor figured out. This mid-range device, it, you know, the fingerprint sensor works better than the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro. I'm not sure exactly what's going on or why, you know, uh, uh, these updates that Google continues to push are causing you know, uh, uh, more complications with people's devices, but they need to fix that. It's not a good look because you got mid-tier devices out here showing up flagships and that's just not supposed to happen. It's good that it happens, but it ain't supposed to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and I guarantee you, Google does not want to be shown up by Samsung's mid-tier device because the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro is Google's flagship device. You see? All right. Now, um, 
before I start playing around with some of the features and things, uh, as I mentioned, we do have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery that is non-removable. We have a type C port. We have 25 watt fast charging that does not come in the box. Hint the reason why this box is so thin. Okay. So you see that no charger in the box. And that's why I didn't even bother doing an unboxing because there's several unboxing videos out there for this device. The only thing that is in the box is the device, the instructions, the SIM ejection tool, and uh, the type C to type C uh, charging cord that goes into the phone and then plugs into a brick that plugs into the wall. Aside from that, you're gonna have to buy the charging brick as a separate accessory, which sucks. I'm not a big fan of that at all. Luckily for me, I've had tons and tons and tons of Samsung devices of old and you know, I got tons of Samsung chargers. I've got a 30 watt fast Samsung charger. I got a 25 watt fast Samsung charger. And if I didn't have those, I've got an Anchor Universal uh, fast charger that I pretty much use to charge all my devices. A lot of times I don't even take these charging bricks out of the boxes because that Anchor is just a super fast charger. So, you know, that's an option as well. You can head over to Amazon. Matter of fact, I think I'll just drop the link to the Anchor fast charger that I have and you guys can order that up. It's got type C ports on it. It's got micro USB ports on it. It's got USB A ports on it. You know what I mean? So you can pretty much charge in a very rapid manner, pretty much any device that you got. All right. Um, but yeah, so again, the colors, as I mentioned earlier, awesome black, white, blue, and peach. Now, additional features, we do have Bluetooth 5.1. We've got NFC. We've got dual stereo speakers. I'm not sure if those are tuned by AKG. It, it isn't, it doesn't say anything about AKG tuned speakers on the box or, you know, any sources that I've read online or anything. You know, AKG tuned is heavily advertised uh, uh, with the S series but I'm not sure if these stereo speakers are AKG tuned, but they sound really good. I mean, so they may very well be. I'm just not seeing any documentation that will, that will prove that, all right? But we do have dual stereo speakers here, okay? Again, we've got an, uh, an, an optical under the display fingerprint sensor, which you guys just saw. We do have facial recognition. We've got IP67 water and dust resistance. We have an SD card slot, so we can expand the memory up to one terabyte, okay? Um, and as far as the dimensions, this phone, it weighs 189 grams and it's 8.1 millimeters in thickness. Okay. Now, another thing too, one of the things that is going to boost performance too on this device, because I know that this, this phone, it has the Exynos 1280 processor. And some of you may not really know too much about Exynos chips. Exynos, uh, is, uh, Samsung's homemade chipsets just like you know how apple they make the abionic chips and they're apple made well the exynos chips are samsung made now usually samsung they usually go with snapdragon processors but then over in different different regions of the world they'll have exynos chips and 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 some of their you know top tier devices of other parts of the world um I think that they decided to go with the 1280 for, for power efficiency. Um, and from what I can tell, the, 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 the Exynos 1280 is the equivalent of a Snapdragon 778, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, now, compared to the A52, Samsung is claiming that you get up to 6% faster performance cores with this device. And how they managed to do that is six gigabytes of the internal storage is used based on how you use your phone as virtual memory to improve app performance. And it's, it's a technology called Ram Plus and it reads your usage patterns and provides extra virtual Ram for an additional boost. Okay. Now, Samsung is also claiming that over the A52, which had the Snapdragon 750G 5G chip, uh, chipset in it, you're getting 33% faster graphic performance for gaming. And then you're also getting up to 40% or 43% rather faster neural processing with the Exynos 1280 processor. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know exactly what the benchmark scoring is, you know, for uh, the, the 1280, but 
and you know, I gotta say, you know, since I've had this device, I mean, I just copped it yesterday. I mean, so, you know, I've, you know, it's, as you can see, it's already set up. I mean, like I said, I didn't want to bother with an unboxing and bore you with that. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, you can see the 120 Hertz uh, refresh rate is active. Things are nice and smooth, very responsive. Uh, pardon me, to the touch. We will go into some applications here and I am connected to my Wi-Fi, so be mindful that, you know, Wi-Fi data is going to be, uh, uh, it's gonna have different speeds than your actual carrier data. Um, and so, you know, actually I got this phone through uh, Xfinity Mobile. I was, I, was in, I was in Xfinity uh, yesterday taking care of some business and I know that they have Xfinity Mobile and I went and took a look at this thing and, um, you know, I've, I've been with them for so many years. I mean, it, it really, didn't cost me anything, you know, to pick this up. And so, um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I just went ahead and took advantage of that. So that is another option too. If you have Xfinity, you know, check out Xfinity Mobile. If you're not really too familiar with Xfinity Mobile, they run off of the Verizon cell towers. And so basically Xfinity Mobile is pretty much Verizon service, okay? They run off the same Verizon cell towers. I mean, so, you know, you know, if, if you're looking for Verizon, but it's a little bit too pricey, Man, check out Xfinity Mobile. It may be, it may be right, it might be right what you know what what you need, you know, cost wise. You know, and they have all the flagship devices, the iPhones, the Samsungs, and what have you. You know what I mean? But yes, I cop this from Xfinity Mobile. All right. Now, um, let's pop over to YouTube Music real quick. As you can see, I haven't signed into a lot of my applications as of yet. You know, I just I got my I got my setup and everything done, but I haven't quite gone into any of the applications. Um, but you know, you'll see as I'm popping in and out of applications and things and just, you know, the speed in which they're opening up, you see that just took a few seconds to get into YouTube. Um, a little bit of choppiness there as it's loading up, but then, I mean, once it loads up, then things are fluid, you see, and that's not a concern because I've experienced that on flagship devices. A lot of times, like when you open up YouTube as the content is still loading, if you try to scroll, then it may, you know, stutter a couple times or what have you. That's typical on a lot of devices whether it be a mid-range, uh, a budget device, or even a flagship device, okay? Okay, so if we wanna go shopping, whoop. let's take it over to Amazon real quick, okay? Pop right into Amazon, not a big deal. Let's go to Best Buy, okay? Just opening up some applications for you real quick just so you can kind of get an idea of, um, of the speed of this thing. And like I said, again, I am connected to my Wi-Fi right now. Okay, so boom, let's check the RAM. Again, we have six gigs. Pop right back into YouTube Music. Pop right back into Best Buy. Let's see, where's Spotify at? Boom, pop right back into Spotify. Took a second to reload it. Not really a big deal there. Um, yeah, just to kind of give you an idea of how this phone functions. Now, you know, this this phone, it's powerful enough. I mean, you know, you can game. Um, you may not be able to game with everything at top end settings, you know, um, but you do have capabilities to play most games on this device with not a problem or a hiccup. OK, um, so, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the Samsung Galaxy A53. Now, real quick, let's let's. Uh, Take it to the settings real quick, just to kind of you know show you a couple of things. And so, this is the same settings menu that is on all the other device. Well, it's 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 one UI 4.1, um, but you can see connections, sounds and vibrations, notifications, display, uh, wallpaper and style, themes, home screen, lock screen, biometrics and security, privacy, location, safety and emergency, accounts and backups, Google, advanced features digital well-being and parental controls, battery and device care, apps, general management, accessibility, software update, tips and user manual about phone. Now, <clears throat> real quick, let's pop into sounds and, and, and vibration. And I just wanna show a couple of things just because for some of you that may just be like, well, you know, you may be on the fence because it's not the flagship and you're wondering if there's a lot of different things that, uh, are, are, that aren't present on this device because of the fact that it's not the flagship that um, I want to show you that that is uh, 
that's that's not the case okay so um we go to volumes i love the fact that you know they give us the option to toggle the ringtone media notification and system they're separate toggles most phones it's like and i and i say this in pretty much every samsung video that i do most phones the uh notification tone and the ringtone are consolidated so if you want to turn down your ringtone because it's glaring blaringly loud but your ring but your notification tone is kind of quiet and you want to increase the notification tone but not necessarily the ringtone you do not have the ability to do that okay on a lot of different phones i love the fact that we have the option to toggle the ringtone and the notification uh, notification tones separately all right i really like that okay then we got call vibration pattern notification vibration pattern a uh, pattern vibration intensity okay touch interaction you can control you know how how you want the phone to vibrate how intense you want that vibration to be system sound vibration control okay you can choose you know the different the different things about the phone that you know will give you a haptic response you can turn all these things on and off touch interactions screen lock and unlock charging dialing keypad samsung keyboard okay vibration touch interactions dialing keyboard navigation gestures charging samsung keyboard right you can you've got full customization as to the haptic feedback and responses for your device now here's a big one for me because i know this on a lot of the, the, the samsung flagships you have sound and quality effects we have dolby atmos we got dolby atmos for gaming we have an equalizer with presets normal pop classic jazz rock custom if you're if you're an audiophile like i am you are going to love these features right yes they are here baked in on the a53 not just on the flagships now another thing adapt sound i talked about this in my unboxing video of the s22 ultra okay this gives you the ability to uh, 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 create a sound or it has like different presets based on your age okay or you know you can create your own and i mean it's you know again it's your ears are unique you may be more sensitive or less sensitive to certain frequencies of sound compared to other people your hearing varies with age and may even differ from your left ear to your right ear adapt sounds gives you a perfect sound that's tuned just for your ears it works whenever you're wearing headphones okay and you can choose adapt sound for media and calls only media or only calls okay by default it's on media and calls okay and then you've got choose a preset that matches your age or try a hearing test to get fully personalized sound so by default it's off but you can choose under 30 years old 30 to 60 years old or over 60 years old and so that is i've never seen any other device that offers something like that where you can really tailor make and customize sound to your liking and me being an audio buff the way that i am and i am super meticulous about the way my music sounds okay everything has to be perfect i, I hear these people driving by in their cars and it's just so bass heavy and it's so much bass you can't hear anything else in the song because all they're concerned about is just beating up the block with the bass, right? I don't care nothing about that. I want a nice, even sound. I want there to be a good amount of bass, but I still want there to be, you know, I want to be able to hear the treble. I want to be able to hear the hi-hats. I want to be able to hear the kick drum. I want to be able to hear the cymbals. I want to be able to hear the piano. I want to be able to hear the organ or the synthesizer. I want to be able to hear the tongos or just, you know what I'm saying? I want a nice, even clean crystal clear sound experience i don't want one sound so blaring to where it's drowning out all the other tracks in the song to where i just can't enjoy the music right and and so this particular option gives me the ability to fine tune and customize my sound to my liking it is wonderful that they have that on the mid-range offering here okay that is a that is a wonderful thing and i appreciate samsung for putting that on there okay now let's go back really quickly um and so all right pardon the interruption ladies and gents kids just came in and they don't care if i'm recording you know what i'm saying they're six and eight they're making all kind of noise um so we got notifications now let's pop in the display real quick 
you already know I got to keep it on dark mode here. Let's 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 put it in light mode real quick for the sake of the video. Um, actually, nah. Let's keep. Like, come on, man. Yeah, let's in the dark mode, man. That's what it is. All right. We do have you know brightness, adaptive brightness. We got the dark mode settings there. Motion smoothness. Now you have high or standard. Okay, high. Get smoother animations and scrolling with 120 hertz screen refresh rate. Standard, get longer battery life with the 60 hertz screen refresh rate. And as I displayed on my S, uh, S22 Ultra video, that when you turn it on standard, it is, it, is, it is a nightmare. It is absolutely atrocious. So uh, I am just gonna keep it on high, which is the 120 hertz. And uh, yeah, I'm content with that. Now. We have eye comfort shield, screen mode. By default, it's on vivid. You do have natural, but you notice that when you put it on natural, you lose the RBG options. And so when you put it back on vivid, you can control the cool versus the warm. And then when you go to advanced settings, this is what's gonna give you the ability to control your RBG, your, your red, greens, and your blues. All right, solid that this is featured on the A53. Okay, we got font size and style, screen zoom, full screen apps, screen timeout, easy mode, edge panels, navigation bar, boom. If you want to go in the navigation bar to toggle how you're going to navigate your device, this is where you go. Okay, so you can have the swipe gestures or you can have the buttons. Me personally, I like how Samsung offers the ability to where if you had the buttons down here on the bottom, you can use them as you can have uh, the swipe gestures that performs pretty much the same action as the button. Hence, why you've got those little three lines, if you could see that at the bottom of the display there. So if I wanna go back, I swipe up on that. If I wanna go home, I swipe up on that. If I wanna go recents, I swipe up from the left, and it's gonna take me to all my recents, okay? Like that, that, is, that, is, that is nice, I really like that, okay? Now, on most Android devices, you know, you've got you know, the gestures where, you know, you swipe up to go home, you swipe up and hold, you know, to bring up the reasons or you're swiping to go back from the right, from the left or the right or whatever to go back. And you could do that too here, but Samsung, you know, they offer you just a little something, a little bit more, you know, uh, with, with, with the way you want to navigate your device. Okay. So we've got accidental touch protection, touch sensitivity, uh, show charging information, screensaver and then if you're looking for something else then there's all these other um settings right here we got side key language visibility enhancements and then always on display now real quick let's pop into always on display real quick okay so as you can see always on display is on then it says show a clock and notification when your phone isn't in use you got tap to show show always show as scheduled or show for new notifications. So I have it show as, you know, show as scheduled, but then you got the clock style and you can choose different clocks. You can choose, you can customize the color to your liking. We got show music information, screen orientation, auto brightness, and then about always on display. So the auto brightness is what's going to, based on the lighting conditions that you're on, that you're in, you know, it's going to either dim the always on display or it's going to brighten up the always on display it just depends on you know the lighting situation that you're in okay boom so that's always on display all right now um see we got wallpaper and style themes home screen lock screen okay now so we do have facial recognition as well and it would be nice if Apple or if Apple were to actually implement both facial recognition and fingerprint sensing on a device rather than just offering one or the other on two separate devices right I mean it's like it's, it's 2022 Apple you know what I mean and and on the Android side of things I mean you've been having choices you know you've been having biometrics options plural not singular <laughs> you know what I'm saying ways to secure your device okay so i showed off the fingerprint sensor a little earlier in the video now we got facial recognition and um let's go ahead and let me see so i'm gonna double tap the display to open it oh come on are you serious of course it doesn't want to work now that i'm on video it was working fine earlier boom okay 
Let's see here. Okay, so as soon as it recognizes my face, it pops right open. And you'll notice too, the camera, it'll like light up like black around it. To, and that's an indication that it's trying to read my face. So I'm not sure if you guys can catch that on video here. I'll do it one more time. You see that? And it just pops right into the home screen. Now, you do have the option, once you set up facial recognition, it will ask you, once the phone recognizes your face, do you want it to go to your home screen or do you want it to stay on the lock screen until you swipe? And they're saying that this way is a little bit less secure. So they're saying that this can be fooled by like a picture or a video of your face as opposed to it staying on the lock, on the lock screen and then you having to do an additional gesture like a swipe or whatever to take you to your home screen. That's a matter of preference. Me personally, I'm like, hey, scan my face and take me to my home screen, okay? But you do have that choice to choose how you want it to open up after the biometrics has read your face, okay? So I, I like that. All right, let's pop back in the settings. Now, uh, again, uh, smart lock, secure lock settings, always on display, wallpaper services, clock style, roaming clock, widgets, contact informations, notifications, shortcuts. This is all lock screen related material, okay? Then we got biometrics and security. This is where you're gonna go to set up your, fi your facial recognition or your fingerprints, more biometric settings, show on lock transition effect, biometric security patch, um, got your Google Play Protect, security update, Google Play system update, uh, find my iPhone, or find my mobile, Samsung Pass, secure folder, private share, Samsung blockchain key store, which is secure and manage your blockchain private key, install unknown apps, encrypt SD card, other security settings. As you can see, we've just got uh, just a whole slew of settings here. Uh, privacy location, I've already gone through that. Let's go into advanced features real quick. Okay, so you got link to Windows. Okay, and you know, I think that's, that's Samsung DeX related. Call and text on other devices, continue apps on other devices, Android Auto, Quick Share, Labs, side key. So this just gives you the ability to control the side key over here. So it's like if you double press the home button, it's either gonna quick launch the camera or open an application. And if you hit choose app, it's gonna ask you which application you want it to choose or you want it to open rather, okay? Uh, but by default, we'll just keep that on quick launch the camera. And then if you press and hold the home button, you can either wake Bixby or power, power a power menu on and off. So I think that I would like to power on and off. And how to power off your device, if you're not familiar with how to do that, okay, if you have the power button when you hold it to open up Bixby, you just simply swipe down and, oh, I thought the option was there. I'm not seeing, the... oh, yeah, it's right here. Okay, so you can see right there at the top, the little circle icon right there, that's your power button. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with how to power down your device, you can either do it from there, or you can choose the power button and press it and hold it, and that will power off your device. It'll give you the ability to restart your device, and you can choose to power it off if that's what you wanna do, all right? But there's a lot of tutorials on this device that teaches you and shows you how to do a lot of different things, just in case you're unfamiliar with how to do these things, all right? Now, I mean, for sure, if you're coming over from an iPhone or something like that, then yeah, you definitely wanna take advantage of some of these tutorials because I think the Android side of things is a, bit, is, a, is a bit more of a learning curve. But if you're going from Android to Apple, Apple can too be a learning curve. And there's a lot of things, a lot of options and features, you know, that are, you know, tucked away under the iPhone settings that a lot of people don't know about. But there's all, you know, the iPhone can get pretty complex as well. And I know a lot of people seem to like the iPhone because of its simplicity, and I get that. But I mean, it can, it can get kind of hairy the deeper you dive into them settings, you see? Um, but yeah, so either way, it's gonna be a learning curve, you know, depending on where you're coming from. All right, now, let's go to motion and gestures. And I like the fact too that a lot of the motions and gestures that you're gonna find on the S22 are also baked in here on the A53. So you got lift the phone to wake. I mean, so if the phone is sitting on a flat surface and you pick it up, it's gonna wake up the phone, 
or at least just turn on the lock screen so you can see what you know see the time the date see if you've got any notifications or what have you okay double tap to turn off the screen which i've already shown okay double tap to turn or, or to turn the screen on double tap to turn it off keep screen on while viewing alert when phone is picked up i mean so say if your phone is laying on a flat surface and you missed a call or a notification as soon as you pick up the phone it's going to vibrate and that's an indication that hey you either you missed the notification or you missed a phone call you know and you can go ahead and check your contacts or missed calls or your, your notifications or whatever you need to check all right um you got mute with gestures and so mute incoming calls and alarms by putting your hand over the screen or turning your phone face down okay and you got palm swipe to capture what is that that's just a screenshot and you're just taking the palm of your hand here running it from left to right on the display well well it just did it but it almost knocked the phone over did a drop test as well that wouldn't have been good um but yeah you just simply take your palm gently run it across the display if i could stop scrolling and there you go that's how you take a screenshot okay simple okay and so like i said i mean in com when when comparing this thing side by side with the s22 i mean again that's the flagship i mean so there were a few things in the in the settings menu that were present on the s22 that weren't here but these weren't even things that i'd even use and so a lot of the stuff that i'm mostly concerned about are here and so with that said why would you go and pay an additional $300 plus because this phone is $499 or $449.99. The S22 starts off at $799. If this phone is pretty much giving you everything that you need, and one of the reasons why I'm showing all this stuff is to show you that, hey, just because this is the mid-tier variant uh, of Samsung, of what Samsung is offering, it's not to say that it is lacking much, okay? Because it's not okay a lot of the things that you find on the flagship you're gonna find here okay now we got one-handed mode bixby routine screenshot and screen recording show contacts when sharing contact video call effects game launcher dual messenger right you got it all you got it all all right now um let's see let's go to about phone and never mind my phone number because i'm gonna bleep that out um, but you can see Galaxy A53 status information or worse software information. Boom. You see we have, just for clarification, we have one UI 4.1 and we're running Android 12, right where it says version. So that's your clarification right there that um, this phone is coming with Android 12 right, right out of the box, which is pretty sweet. Um, I know that sometimes, you know, with the mid-tier devices, you know, they'll kind of lack on the update, but Samsung is claiming to get much better than that. And so the, the same, you know, updates that you're going to get with the flagships, you know, you're also going to get those same updates on the A53 here, which is right now a little bit better than what the Pixel is offering. And one of the Pixel's main claims to fame was how consistent those updates would be coming, software and security. Okay, but it seems like Samsung has kind of like leaped Google as far as the consistency and the amount of time that you're going to get, you know, the security patches and software updates, which means that you get to enjoy your device for longer. If you care about having the latest software, some people don't care about that. Okay, but then there's a lot of people that do. And I'm one of those kind of guys to where, hey, as soon as a new software uh, update releases, I want it because I want all the nuances that come along with that. Now, I don't want all the problems that are associated with some of these updates, like what Google is facing right now with the Pixel, right? So let's just hope that when these updates do come about, that it's not going to, you know, it's going to be more of a luxury uh, 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 rather than a liability, all right? So um, that's pretty much all that I wanted to show as far as the settings. Now, here, let's, let's pop into these cameras real quick. You know, again, we have a what's my cheat sheet at? like i said i mean we got a quad camera system here uh 64 megapixel main lens 12 megapixel ultra wide 5 megapixel macro 5 megapixel depth okay and then we've got a 32 megapixel selfie sensor and let's see here so let's snap a picture of the box there wow look at that now see the phone will detect when 
the screen is uh, like when you're like up close on a subject. And so just because I like got real close to the device right there, the phone is recommending and it pops up on the screen right in front of me where I can't, where I, I can't miss it, use macro mode. So let's see. Boom. Wow. That is a beautiful picture of the A53 box. All right, so here, let's uh, swing that around real quick. Get a selfie. Again, 32 megapixels on the selfie camera. Boom, okay. Wow. It's got some nice quality on that there. Okay. You know, never, never mind the devilishly handsomeness. Just focus on the picture quality, ladies and gents. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, that's a really good photo right there. And so I'm, you know, looking forward to getting, you know, a bunch of photos here. Again, I am going to be doing a comparison between this and the iPhone SE third gen. So stay tuned for that. Um, now real quick before I end the video, let's pop into some of the settings real quick. As you can see here, we have, we got photo, video. If you go to more, we've got Bixby Vision, AR Zone, Pro Mode, Pro Video, Single Take, Night Mode, which Night Mode is not something that you're gonna find on the iPhone SE third gen. And it doesn't make any sense to me because that phone has the 815 Bionic chip. I don't know why I keep wanting to say 813. Okay, that phone has the A15 Bionic. It should have night mode, but it does not. Okay, so this is definitely an aspect where the A53 has it beat. You have night mode, food mode, panorama, macro, super slow-mo, slow motion, hyperlapse. Okay. Okay, boom, let's get out of that. Okay, we have portrait mode, and then we have uh, fun mode. Not sure what fun mode is. Okay, change your look and reimagine your world with unique Snapchat lenses. There's a new one to try every day. By continuing, you agree to Snap's terms of service and privacy policy. Okay, so, you know, for, you know, the younger crowd out there, you know, if you're on Snapchat or whatever, that's, you know, some fun little, uh, 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 options that you can play with for your Snapchat photos. You know what I'm saying? All right. Now here is, this is the, uh, the flash. You can have it on auto or off. So let's just have for now it is off. Here is your timer. We got two seconds, five seconds or 10 seconds. Here is the, uh, aspect ratio. So by default, it's on three by four, but you got nine by 16, one by one or full screen for the viewfinder here. This is motion photo. So it's just kind of like, um, I'll turn that off. It's off by default, but that's just like when you take a picture, it just takes like a little two second video. So it looks like your photos are moving. Um, here are some different color filters. You got original, warm, cool, lolly, frosty ivory blossom you get it okay um and then you got my filters and then you got face right there um i think that's like a like a beauty mode option or something like that now let's pop in the settings okay so we got scene optimizer shot suggestion scan qr code swipe shutter button and by default it's take burst shot when you swipe the shutter button or you can have it create a gif if that's what you want to do all right we got high efficiency pictures now for the selfie camera we got save selfies as previewed for videos we got reduced file size save space without sacrificing video quality the results will be saved in hevc format which some apps and websites don't support okay now we have auto fps video stabilization now your general settings we have auto hdr grid lines. I do want grid lines on. We got location tags, shooting methods, settings to keep, shutter sound, watermark. I do want the watermark on. We got show Snapchat lenses in fun mode. And then for privacy, we got privacy notice, permissions, reset settings about camera and contact us. All right. So 
you can see there, ladies and gentlemen, that this phone is offering a ton of features in the camera and just overall, which that's why One UI is my favorite user interface because you have the ability to customize this phone and pretty much do what you want with it and make it make it your own. You can really personalize this thing to where it's not gonna look like any other, you know, with the exception of the exterior body, but your display, your apps layout and all that kind of thing, you can really personalize it to where it's not gonna look like somebody else's device. And I'm a huge fan of that. The more I have the ability to customize for me, the better. All right, so, Ladies and gentlemen, that is my, you know, first initial thoughts and impressions um, and visuals of the Galaxy A53. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share and subscribe to uh, uh, expose yourself to tons of videos that I've done like this one. Be sure to hit that notification bell. Keep it locked at Pristine Mobile Tech so every time my videos drop, you'll get notified. And be one of the first to check out the video. Comment section is where I'm always chilling at. I'd love to know your feedback questions comments your thoughts on you know the uh, on what you saw if i missed anything you know if there's anything that you want me to talk about in the full pristine review the comment section is how to get a hold of me the only thing that i ask is that we keep it respectful and let's talk tech respectfully all right all right man so thanks for letting me bend your ear ladies and gentlemen about the new a53 5g here you already know please stay safe get spiritually fit we're definitely living in the last days and I will catch you guys in the next video. Keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives. I right. Peace.